Hello! I have gotten a few requests for how I do my sharpening um, and I do it a couple different ways. Here's just a really quick edit I've done with um, this senior session. Here's the before and here's the after. Those are just a few simple tweaks um, here uh, using the pretty presets and then I tweaked it a little bit to my liking but I haven't done any sharpening yet and I reset the sharpening so it comes exactly as you see it when you import a photo into Lightroom. I'm going to zoom in. I'll just do like a one. Actually I'm going to zoom out. I lied. I'll show you what I do over here and how it affects the overall picture and then I'll zoom in and I'll show you um, how it affects you know one single spot. So the first thing I do when I'm sharpening is I set the radius and detail all the way to 100. And that just means that it's sharpening as much as it can. Okay, I'm not really sure how to describe this. This is sharp. <laughs> this is going to affect how it sharpens, and this is going to affect how much it sharpens. So basically, you're just telling it to sharpen with a lot of detail. Uh, sorry, that took me a while to get out of my brain. Um, so I set those th radius to 3.0 and detail to 100. Um, and I set the amount anywhere from, you know, 60, 70, or I can even bump it up if I had a particularly, particularly low ISO. Obviously, you can see setting it to 150 kind of creates some weird looking stuff right there. So I'm going to just set it a bit lower. I usually use an ISO of like a hundred or so. Um, so I set that pretty, I set the sharpening pretty high because I know there's not much grain in my image to start with. Um, so right here I'm setting it to about 98. Now where it gets really important is this masking slider. Um, while holding down the Alt key and clicking on the masking slider, holding down the masking slider, we're gonna drag it to the right. And basically all the white parts of this image are what it's sharpening. So as you drag it to the right, it's sharpening less and less of the image. But what it does is it um, <laughs> um, all the black parts that you're seeing are the areas that aren't in focus anyways. So as we drag this more and more to the right, it's only going to sharpen the parts of the image that are already in focus. Um, and that's a really cool tool so that you're not sharpening areas that you don't need to and that just helps your subject pop a bit more. I like to keep it around, maybe there. Um, and so you can see like the before and after. Let me, let me scroll down here and show you the difference of like that is before the masking and that is after masking. I know it's really, really tough to see. Um, let's zoom in and take a look. So here she is in focus. That's before masking. Um, and you can kind of tell that some of these circles over here in the bokeh are like harsh and weirdly sharpened. Um, and then after masking, the kind of blurs out just a little bit. Um, and she still stays popped. Isn't that nice? I love that. For the luminance noise reduction slider, I'm just gonna set that pretty low, maybe to about a 20. I don't have a lot of noise uh, like grain in my image. So I'm going to set that pretty low. Um, and then for the color noise reduction, I usually like to have that higher-ish just in case there is any color noise, reds and greens that those are taken care of. Um, it doesn't look like I have much in this photo, but just for kicks and giggles, I like to set that pretty high. And there we go. You can see there's before sharpening and after sharpening. I'll zoom in so you can see it. There's before sharpening. Oh, there we go. And after sharpening. There we go. Usually, um, that's all I would really do, um, especially in Lightroom. But if you want to get more specific with it, I'm just hitting Command E on my keyboard. Um, and that's exporting the picture from, sorry, that's a grab announcement for a different client. Um, that hitting Command E in Lightroom takes the picture that you're working on and sends it into Photoshop to be edited. At least that's how it is in Lightroom CC. Uh, I'm not sure if it does if that shortcut is available 
I can't talk today. I'm not sure if that shortcut is available on all versions of Lightroom or just CC, but it's really handy. Um, you can always just go to uh, Photo, Edit in Photoshop CC. Okay. Um, if I want to sharpen more in Photoshop, um, I are all one step I already did is I just duplicated the background layer, and that's just going to make sure that we um, aren't affecting the background directly. Um, so just clicking on this background copy layer, one of my favorite ways to sharpen is to hit filter other high pass. Um, and this doing this is going to bring up a preview. Um, and then you slide. Um, and that's you're basically just saying what the details are in your photo. So if you want to sharpen the details like this, or all these details, all these details, all these details. If you have it over here, it's going to sharpen everything in the image. Oops, see, it's taken a while to load because <laughs> uh, it's trying to bring everything in. Um, so you want to have that set pretty low. Um, I'm sure it's going to be hard to see on the video, um, but you can see her pretty well here. I'm actually going to a little bit less. Just bringing in those very, very uh, details that are the sharp parts of your image. Um, you can see over here there's no texture or detail because that's all the parts that are out of focus in my image. Um, so this is going to be different for about every image, but once you have it to where you can just see the details and the outline of the image, um, you hit OK. Um, and then you're going to change the blending layer, the blending mode of that layer, um, to either soft light, hard light, or vivid light, depending on, or linear light even, but that's going to make it like a really overly sharpened. Um, and then as you go down, it's going to sharpen it less and less and less. So soft light, you see it's just sharpening just the tiniest touch. Um, it adds a nice little sharpening to your image. Um, Hard light, you can see it sharpens even more. Look at that, it's beautiful. I love that. Um, but you can see sometimes it sharpens, you know, over here. If you don't like that, you can just add a layer mask to your image. Go over here with the brush tool, making sure it's on black. And erase the parts of your image uh, from here. Oh, it's only on 5% opacity. Um, putting it on 100, you can kind of erase those parts that you didn't want to sharpen in the first place. Um, that's just one way to do it. I love that. I love this picture. Um, but that's just one way that I sharpen. You can see the before and after. And this is already with Lightroom sharpening. So that is already with the uh, sharpening edits I did in Lightroom. Um, but that's after I did the high pass filter layer. Another way I like to do it, um, we're going to duplicate our layer again. Uh, I'm just going to go to Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharp Mask. Now this is a very uh, touchy <laughs> kind of tool. If you overdo it, it will be way too much. Um, let's see if I set the threshold really low and I have the radius really high. You can see what it starts to do to the image. Um, it starts to get weird. Now the amount is just the strength of the sharpening. You can tell that pretty easily. Um, I like to have it set maybe around 80, 70, 80, whatever. Um, this is going to vary from image to image depending on how much you want it sharpened. The radius is um, kind of, oh, it's kind of the same. Um, this affects the darker points of your image. Um, so it's basically just saying how much contrast you want to add in the darks in order for it to be sharpened. Um, and these two kind of go hand in hand, radius and threshold. You can get away with a higher radius like this if you also have your threshold quite a bit lighter as well. It's going to take forever. Uh, but then as you can see, if you start to lower it, it's going to get kind of funky. And this tool takes quite a while, so um, excuse me for kind of dragging this video along. Um, just because it kind of takes a while to catch up. Sometimes it's easier if you use this preview instead of this one, um, just because it's a bit faster. But I generally like to have this pretty low and the threshold um, pretty low as well. The threshold is kind of the same idea as what we were just doing um, in the high pass filter and in the 
masking in Lightroom. It's just saying, you know, what threshold do you want to have for sharpening? Uh, do you want to sharpen the background or do you not? Um, so having it all the way at one or zero is going to sharpen everything in the image while having it way up here is going to sharpen nothing in the image and then you're going to be sharpening only the very sharpest. I kind of like to have this kind of in the middle um, and then you can work your threshold from there. I mean your radius from there. There we go. And for some reason this tool looks different in preview than it looks when you hit OK. Um, probably just because it doesn't preview that fast. Oh, come on. I'm just going to undo that and try it again. Like I said, it's very picky. If you're not getting the results you're looking for, you can always try lowering the threshold or bumping the radius a little bit, upping the amount a little bit. This is very specific tool. There we go. Ooh, see, as you can tell, the preview right there, when I let go, that's what it would look like. So now I'm just lowering that radius until it looks normal. Lowering the threshold. There we go. That might look a little bit better for us. You can see before and after the Arn Sharp mask. Um, that's a bit extreme. I wouldn't go that extreme if I were doing my own work. Uh, but if you do it too much on accident, you can always play with the opacity of it. Um, that's full opacity and compared to like half opacity, you know, you can you can tell. Um, so that's before and after. That just kind of helps add some contrast in. Um, sorry, this was kind of a really long video. Um, those are just my three most commonly used methods. Um, you can you can play around with all of these. Oops, you can play with all around, all of these sharpen filters in Photoshop. They all kind of do different things, um, but as you can tell, I mean you can pretty much read from the description. You know, shake reduction, sharpen regular sharpen, you sharpen edges, um, stuff like that. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me, let me know, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you.